Welcome to episode 12, 13 Minutes to the Moon, live. It was an idea I had in this 50th anniversary year of Apollo to try and commemorate that huge achievement. Uh, and we wanted to focus the question on that final 13 minutes before Apollo 11 touched down on the moon. And we wanted to unfold that story. But in doing so, we end up unfolding the whole story of Apollo. Okay, all flight controllers, gonna go for landing. Retro. Go. Lido. Go. Guidance. Go. Control. Go. Telcom. Go. GNC. Go. Econ. Go. Surgeon. Go. We've got this wonderful 12-part podcast series, the final podcast uh, episode we're recording here tonight at the Baker Institute for Public Policy. Um, and, and so that's 13 minutes to the moon, uh, and you can get it wherever you get your podcasts. And when I heard President Kennedy say that we were going to do it in the decade of the, of the 60s, I thought to myself, I don't know about that. Uh, I'm not sure that's doable. But uh, when I became a part of it, we just kept plugging away at it, and uh, he was right. We made it. We were excited as all get out to have the opportunity to fly a, a mission like that. We wanted to fly the first mission, and we wanted to fly the landing on the moon. As I look back on it now, I just feel fortunate to have lived when I did and be able to join that group. I know you see pictures of us, we look pretty serious at times, but let me tell you, it was fun. In fact, it was a hoot. This is very special for Rice. And the Baker Institute has been very active on space policy with Mr. George Abbey, who was former director of Johnson Space Center. And we've had a number of events celebrating the history of the U.S. space program. And of course, Apollo, Apollo 11 is, is a key a landmark in, in that entire history. I had the best seat in the house. My responsibility was to watch the command and service module, which was orbiting the moon 60 miles overhead with, and doing just fine. So I could just, I just kind of sit back, posh up some extra loops to listen to, communications loops to listen to. And then the drama began. You got down to the real terminal phase, and then the concern became fuel. It was, it was a drama that had it pointed out nothing like any simulation we had ever had, although we had hundreds of simulations of just that phase. We made a 60 second call, and then we made a 30 second and a 20 second, and uh, about to make a 10 second call when, uh, when he touched down and, and shut the engine down. They went back later and calculated, they think they had about 17 seconds of fuel. Yeah, I'm gonna step off the limb now. My parents let us stay up late. That was a big deal. <laughs> we didn't get to stay up late for any reason. And uh, they actually, I remember being in my pajamas and watching on a really old, cruddy black and white. I know the video wasn't great in any case, but I don't think I understood as a nine-year-old the total significance of the event, but it certainly made an impression on me. And it's one that lasted and one that I, made me want to become an astronaut. I think it's, it's great to remember where we were uh, and how things changed over time and how quickly we did these things. It was an inspirational time and I actually think you know we're on the cusp of something new again and I'd like to hope that our young people are going to be as, as likely inspired as I was. 